Hello, and welcome to another edition of Alien Investigations. I'm Steven, and we are actually broadcasting not from my usual channel, uh, this live match that's going to be between Guillaume, hence why I'm over on this side of the screen for once. So we are actually broadcasting from Guillaume's channel because my StreamYard account is a little low on the recording hours at the moment. But that's okay. You know, Guillaume had plenty of them to share, and uh, we'll be playtesting tonight the unofficial, unsanctioned, unauthorized cards from my Season 4 expansion that we have been working on for the past, what, eight months? Just so with the help of Guillaume and David Peace, who actually is in attendance at the moment, and uh, Nathan as well, we have been able to refine the cards that I wrote many, many months ago, and at this time we've been playtesting for the last several months trying to work out all of the kinks in the cards, work out any mechanical issues, and tonight we will be conducting our 13th playtest of the Season 4 expansion, codenamed 040460 after Agent Doggett's birthday. It, we're really close to the finish line. Dax has completed all 175 of the main set. We just have a few promos to get... To get uh, created and then that'll be that'll be that as far as uh, creating the cards go it'll just be a matter of making sure that they are all mechanically sound so that anyone who does decide to get some printed is going to get a card that actually works we've only had to rewrite a couple of cards because at a later point from the time that I wrote them I became aware that some of the cards in the unreleased Scully expansion shared a very similar effect to the point that I was like, well, we don't like to rehash previously covered ground, so we had to just revise some of the effects for a few cards, not too many, like two or three if I'm not mistaken, and so, you know, that wasn't too much of an ardu arduous process because I would say between Giam and Nathan and myself and even David as well, you know, we're not quite short on ideas. We have a lot of ideas for cards, and that's why we're planning to do expansions well beyond Season 4. So, Guillaume, why don't we go ahead and get started uh, by introducing our teams. I know you've got a few from the Season 4 expansion, don't you? Or, actually, I'm seeing... Actually, tonight, um, my deck is mostly made of Season 4 cards, but my agents are... There are no agents from Season 4. There are none. You do have the promo for Mulder, but that's yeah. about it. Okay. No problem. Yeah, but you have, to be fair, you have been playing with these Season 4 agents in probably about maybe eight, nine of the playtests, perhaps? I really wanted to have a different team. I tried to have a different different team during each playtest. So at mm -hmm. some point, if I want to use different agents, sometimes they just don't match those in Season 4. So I right. decided to go you know, all commercial on the agents. <laughs> it wouldn't be a game without cholera making an appearance. But anyway, sorry, go ahead and introduce your teams for those who maybe can't see which agent cards you have there. Yeah, so I have Mulder, I have Crycheck, Albert Hostin, and I have Agent Henderson. Excellent. Pretty good team. And the fact that you included Crycheck in there tells me that you're very wary of what adversaries I might be throwing at you from right. Season 4. And you can rest assured I will be throwing some at you, provided they do come up. So the team that I'll be using to uh, determine Guillaume's hidden X-File are Agent Fox Mulder, Mike Millar, the NTSB agent from the Tempest Fugit and Max two-parter, Detective Hudak from the uh, late Season 4 episode Elegy, uh, Agent Heaton from the Season 4 finale Gethsemane, and last but not least, my tried-and-true favorite agent who I would be... Remiss to exclude from any of my games, Detective Manners. <laughs> and so Guillaume has his X-File located. It's right next to Henderson, that's right? Yep. And uh, I've got mine right up here. I believe, sir, we are set to go. Let's determine who's going to be going first. You know my usual standard for determining that. Investigating player, conspiracy player. All right, Guillaume, which hand is it going to be? Right, you're right. My right hand. You're going to be starting off as the conspiracy player. 
And I will be starting off as the investigating player. So let's draw our seven and get this party started. And I will draw my free card to begin the briefing phase. So the combined res of my team for this first round, Mulder has two, but they will be used to generate card or they will be used to purchase cards. Mike Millar has one, but he's treated as a res two when he's in the field. But for this first round, he will only be generating one. Detective Hudek has one. Agent Heaton has one, and Detective Manners has zero, but he sure makes up for that with his awesome game effect. So of the five, I believe I'll just draw the two for Mulder and then add three to my resource pool, which I have yet to set out. I do apologize for the slow start this evening. Oops. Okay, so that'll take my resource pool up from five to eight. And I pass it over to you to buy and or to sell and buy. Oh, I'm going to sell one card. I'm going to sell the Chimera Man for two, which puts me up to four. And I'm going to buy two cards. Yeah. And back to you. Thank you. Uh, seeing as this is the inaugural round, my agents are not in need of healing, so we'll skip the healing phase and head into requisition. I did not pull any equipment cards in this first draw, so we'll be brushing past the requisition phase as well. For deployment, we're going to send everyone out to the field. Everyone has completed their paperwork in a timely manner, and so therefore they have been awarded a trip outside for some fresh air. You certainly need it when you're in that stuffy FBI building all day long. For case assignment, we'll be playing two sites, specifically Angie's Midnight Bull in Washington, D.C., and the oil refinery in Alberta, Canada. And we'll be using two of Mulder's three tokens to pay for both of those sites. The first one, Guillaume, Angie's Midnight Bull, has the keywords affiliation and observation. The second one, oil refinery in Alberta, Canada, has the keywords evidence collection and motive. They're both monocytes. And let's see. I am first going to play a resource card Bitter Defeat, in which I'll play in your field in... Ah, and I'll be playing Bitter Defeat, which I'll place in my field section with two tokens on this card. I will remove a token to double the cost of any one bluff played by your opponent. If your opponent is unable to pay the uh, augmented cost, the bluff is discarded. Discard this resource after both tokens have been removed. So I will use my... Investigating player tokens because that is a resource card. So I'm going to place that one up here and I will deduct four from my resource pool to pay for it. I await any bluffs you might have for me. No bluffs. No bluffs. As we enter the investigation phase, I will be assigning Mulder, Detective Manners, and Detective Hudek to Angie's Midnight Bowl, and I'll be sending Mike Millar and Agent Heaton to the oil refinery. I will play Warning from the Loa to force my opponent to reveal any adversary cards in his hand. If you have one or more, Guillaume, you have to discard one at random. Well, I have just one. Just one. I have nastiness. Which is played upon, which has a witness activator, so you wouldn't have been able to play it anyway. But seeing as that's the only one you have in your hand, I'm afraid you'll have to part ways with it. But that will take my resource pool down to two. And I think that's one adversary that I've had in my deck. I think probably during every playtest and every time she ends up, she ends up being discarded. 
So yeah, even though we do have a lot of witness resources in this uh, expansion, that she should have plenty of opportunities. And, uh, so we'll begin with uh, Angie's Midnight Bull. Uh, it's observation four. Mulder has two. Detective Manners has two, and Detective Hudek has one. So I have five, which is just enough to make the uh, skill check, the sight skill check, with a little bit of padding. And again, that's affiliation. All right, so I have just one card to play. I have quarantine zone, which costs. Oh, oh. You know, two. quarantine so. zone. All right, well, you got me there. It's okay. Place this card on top of an opponent's site and place two tokens on it. Remove a token during each of the following briefing phases. Or if this card is in play, the site may not be resolved. The team yeah. can or contribute their skills until the last token has been removed, except for agents equipped with the biohazard suit. All right. Well, that is that. Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to, if it's not too late, uh, Detective Hudex re regenerates one in my pool because he's oh, a site. Okay. What's that? Yeah, I said, go ahead. Yeah. Not too late. Yeah, thank you so much. Not that it's going to get me out of this one. I am still bested because. That is an event, and I do not have anything to which I can use to get me out of that. So two rounds, right? All right, I'm going to just place two tokens on that. Nevertheless, um, I'm not out yet, for we still have a second site to investigate. We'll head over to the oil refinery in Alberta, Canada, Mike Millar has three evidence collection to apply to this evidence for prerequisite, and Agent Heaton has two. So I have five evidence collection there. What do you have for me? Oh, uh, well, I have nothing for that one. Nothing for that one. And in that case, my team has been awarded a motive question for a successful investigation on that. I will be asking, by any chance, is your X-Files motive security? Uh, no, it's not. It is not. I'm currently sitting on six cards, so I'll hold on to all of them. What about you, Neo? I have six cards as well. All right, let's pass it over to you. All right, so doing my free card. Okay. All right. I'm going to generate my res, which is one, two, three, which is four. In addition to Mordor's card, to Mordor's two cards, I'm going to draw just uh, I'm going to draw an extra one, so that's three cards. All right. I just have two cards to sell. Hack into government files for five and Sheriff Hamilton for four. Um, I think I'm just going to buy two cards and then add the remaining nine, or, well, of that nine, it's seven, so that'll take my conspiracy pool up to 12. Five to 12. Okay, so no healing, no requisition. For deployment, I'm going to send everyone to the field. And and before we go any further, I'm going to use a bot token to look at your hand. Alrighty, so I have of the RP variety, I have Kurt Crawford and Aura Photography. And the CP cards, I have No Trespassing, Gray-Haired Man, Ed Jerson is Talking Tattoo, and Gulag Bird. Oh, quite, a, quite a selection. <laughs> indeed, indeed.
indeed it is. Move them up a bit. Sorry, I got my whole lot of stuff going on on this table here. Well, I'll, move, I'll get the RP cards out of the way since we obviously aren't casting it on any of those. You can see them. Okay, so no trace pacing, I know this one, Gulag Bird as well. So the gray head man, what are he... Evidence collection is his activator. Okay. And then Edgers is result. Okay. So I'm going to cast Abbott's token on no trespassing. No trespassing, okay. And before I play the site, I'm also going to play Bitter Defeat for four. Life is like a box of chocolates. Cheap, thoughtless, perfunctory gift that nobody ever asks for. Unreturnable because all you get back is another box of chocolates. So you're stuck with this undefinable whipped mint craft that you mindlessly wolf down when there's nothing else left to eat. Sure, once in a while there's a, a peanut butter cup or an English toffee, but they're gone too fast and the taste is fleeting. So you end up with nothing but broken bits filled with hardened jelly and teeth shattering nuts. If you're desperate enough to eat those, all you've got left is, a, is an empty box filled with useless brown paper wrappers. Good card, now that we've adjusted it to bluff. <laughs> and for case assignment, we're going to go to Central Prison in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah. It costs one, so it's a multi-site. It's occult investigation or criminal investigation. And it's a motive or method question. Well, I'm going to have to do it. One bluff on there. Um, I'm sending everyone to the mm -hmm. site. I know which, which bluff you are going to. Mm -hmm. So the question is, which skill are you choosing to apply? Uh, I'm going to apply occult investigation. All right. And so the bluff, as you have imagined, is the gulag bird. Yeah. So. Because it was face down, I'll be paying the full cost of that. Well, which well, and then some. So that's going to take my re my conspiracy pull down to one. Yeah. Good lord! Come on, over there. Yes, <laughs> And I'll go ahead and read the effect for the audience in question, even though it's very text-heavy. Place this card beneath an agent to move them to a section of the table designated the Gulag. Place the three tokens on the agent, two if played on agent crycheck. Remove one token during each of the opponent's debriefing phases. While in play, the agent may not move or contribute to any skill checks. All equipment attached to the imprisoned agent is immediately discarded. Discard this card when the last token is removed and move the agent to the bureau. And I'm afraid Albert Hosting will be taking a little trip over to Siberia, unless you got something to negate that. No, I don't. All right, nice to you, Albert. Uh, you know, take it easy in there. Try to come back to us. <laughs> so we'll see that the good egg is here. All right. And I, even with Albert's four occult, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mulder has three, and if uh, Krychik probably has one, right? Or no? No, no, no that's that's all. Um, the, all the, yeah, the, it, only Mulder has uh, occult. Oh, okay. But, yeah, it was either if if I, yeah, I figured I would be sending Albert because I wanted to keep at least Mulder and Krychik. Let's head into debriefing. 
And uh, we'll say sayonara to Central Prison. And I'm only sitting on three cards. Well, sorry, five, because I saw my other two RP that I set aside for this round. So I currently have five that I'm holding on to. Keep them all. Well, actually, no, I'm going to get rid of no trespassing, because why should I give Guillaume the, the luxury of a, a free question? <laughs> going to did, you, did you see Dave's comment? It's like, ooh, someone's oh, yeah. going to the gulag. <laughs> okay. That is um, my the first time okay. I sent an agent to the gulag tonight. So it's, uh, I mean, on that on that sense, it is uh, a bit, you know, rewarding. Is like that effect that I, you know, that I can, that I conceived so long ago. I finally get to actually put it into oh uh, yeah place it's for because it, it is a big theme of this particular expansion. So it was rewarding that sense i just wish i didn't have to pay so much for it <laughs> everything's so expensive in 2022 even the conspiracy cards <laughs> all right so yeah let's uh pass it back to me then i'm gonna draw my free card to begin the turn and no oh boy we are not generating as much res this round unfortunately uh because my team has uh been yeah put in a uh, timeout for a little bit. So because Mike Millar is in the field, he is being treated as a rest too, so that is a plus. Um, meanwhile, Agent Heaton also gets one. So of the three, I guess I'll draw two, add one. And then I'll be removing one of the tokens during this briefing phase. Over to you. All right, so I'm going to sell the defibrillator for four, and as much as I had to do this, I'm going to sell Mrs. Mulder for five because I do need some CP. Uh, puts me up to 11. I'm going to buy four cards. In the healing phase, there's not really any healing we can do. For requisition, I do not have any equipment to requisition to them. For deployment, we'll keep them where they are. For case assignment, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Agent Heaton's one token to... Draw one keyword evidence or evidence collection card from my bureau deck and add it to my hand. Then, have you run it through the NCIC? Yep. This is your assailant. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a criminal record. Try the federal database. I'll be damned. How'd you know he'd be a government employee? Where does he work? Right here in Washington. Michael Critchgell, formerly of the U.S. Army, now attached to the Pentagon's Research Division in Virginia. Yeah, so hopefully I've got another evidence collection site in there. I should. Oh, thank goodness I did have one in there. Yeah, quarantine Zen is a very powerful card, and I'm just looking at some of the early versions that we had, and the first version, it was three tokens on the card, yeah. I'm seeing, I'm seeing it on from a different. I'm seeing it from a different perspective tonight. So yeah, that was a, a good reduction for the uh, for that card. Uh, so for case assignment, we'll be sending Mike Millar and Agent Heaton to Newark, New Jersey, and that is a monocyte Guillaume, and uh, with the keywords evidence collection and method, and I'll be deducting two from my resource pool to pay for that and before you play anything i am going to play hopefully this is going to actually prove a worthwhile investment but i'm going to play maintaining deniability for two for the remainder of this turn your opponent may only play keyword government cards and that's going to zero out my resource pool so unless you got a government card i'm spent yeah no that will do it did that, act, did that card actually make the difference? Yeah. So I just realized that I forgot to remove one Gulag Bird token during my debriefing phase. Oh, yeah. Go for it. 
Yep. Well, considering I only had a two-man operation going for this round, the fact that I'm still walking away with a question is quite remarkable. And so let me choose carefully because it's possible I may have to sit out the next round. Yeah, by any chance, is your X-Files method violence? No, it's not. It is not. Still quite a few possibilities remaining, even with those two questions. So I'll refrain from taking a crack at Guillaume's X-Files identity at this time. As we head into debriefing, I am sitting on six cards, and I am inclined to keep all of them. So I have uh, nine cards, so I have some discarding to do. So I'm discarding two sites. I'm discarding the UFO crash site and the Benzai and Cemetery in Brooklyn. And I now have seven cards. Okay. We'll pass it back to you. Go ahead and draw that free card. Okay, I'm going to generate my res, which is now three. Before I go any further, I'm going to play OA Photography for one. Mm -hmm. uh, if the team makes a sciences four plus kill check, add five tokens to the resource pool. So, two, three, quatre, they just have four. Yeah. And... I'm going to buy just the, the two from older and just one extra card. So three cards and passing it back to you. Thank you. This is going to hurt, but I'm going to be discard. I'm going to be selling surfing the net for two Kirk Crawford for two and the peacock residence home for two. That's six of that six. I will take two cards and then I'll add four to the conspiracy pool, which will take it up to five. There's that small blessings. All right, back to you. Okay. Um, no hitting, no requisition for deployment and keeping everyone where they are. I'm going to play Samantha. Agrarian clone for three. Uh, adds one to your pool every time a keyword alien or alien investigation card is played. What is this? What's going on here? What did I tell you, Mr. Mulder? That looks just like my sister. It's not possible. She's no older than the day she was taken. Samantha? Making me proud. And for case assignment, we are going to go to the UFO crash site. It's a alien investigation or observation 5 plus, and it's an affiliation or result question. Uh, I'm going to use one of Mulder's tokens to pay for the site, and I'm going to get one resource back since it's a keyword alien investigation. Okay. Two bluffs. I'm sending everyone to the site. All right. And I assume you're going for the alien investigation portion right. of that? Yeah. yeah. That would sense and you have just enough between molder and crycheck if i'm not mistaken oh, i have seven. Oh, molder has four and crycheck has yes three yeah. yeah okay all right yeah i keep forgetting his 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 number of alien investigation all right so with that i'll be revealing the first bluff which is writing on the wall which i'll attach to okay. keyword multi-site to choose which prerequisite your opponent's team must meet for this site. So it was face down, so I'll be deducting one from that. And so you now have to invest, you have to apply your observation skills to this site. 
And if I'm not mistaken, because I was just checking a moment ago, I believe you're one shy. Yeah, I only have four. If, it would have been enough if Albert had been on the Albert team. Albert was with you, yeah. <laughs> and I'm also going to reveal the second bluff, which was just the death card. So pay to add four. Face down, adds three. Well, that's that. That is that. Not too shabby, considering I didn't have a whole lot of conspiracy points to work with that round. Um, so uh, as we enter debriefing, I've got three in my hand. So, yeah. I'll and then have on eight. To you have eight. And uh, remove one from hosting for debriefing. So he's got one more round in which he needs to sit out. I'm and, discarding Kurt Crawford. Yeah. I didn't want to do that because I'm like, well, he could have a cancer card you know, at any moment. But I need the CP. Let's pass it back to me, and I will draw my free card to begin the round. And because this is the last for, uh, briefing phase, we'll be removing the second quarantine token from that. And so Angie's Midnight Bull has been cleared by the CDC, the Hazmat, and whoever else you know got called in for you know for that uh, bit of uh, athlete's athlete's foot outbreak. Or whatever it was that was played, which is kind of fitting because it's a bowling alley, you know. <laughs> Telling you, when they don't spray those bowling shoes down after use, bad things happen. So with that, I'll be able to generate the full res on my team. Thank goodness. Mulder has his two, which will be used for generating cards. Hudek has one. Mike Millar is still out in the field, so he's getting two. And Heaton has one. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two for Mulder and then add the four to the resource pool. And so now it just begs the question of how are we going to do this? Okay, over to you. Okay, so no, no selling. No selling. Oh, boy. That makes me... Sh I should be sweating more bullets now because of that. It means he's got a good hand. Let's begin by heading into healing, for which my team is all good on the healing front. We are going to skip past requisition because I have no equipment at this time. We will send the team back to Angie's Midnight Bowl, which was already paid for in a previous round. It's affiliation and observation. And uh, I'm going to also play Aura Photography for one which will mean that my team, provided they can make a Sciences 4 skill check, will get to add five tokens to the pool. Um, Heaton has one. Mike Millar has two. Mulder has one. So it's just enough to make that four skill check. So I will be adding five for a total of eight. No bluffs. No bluffs. And let's head into Investigation. Currently, as it stands, Guillaume, my team is sitting on a decent amount of observation. Mulder has two, Manners has two, Hudek has one, Mike Millar has one. However, because he is on the same team as Mulder, he will be adding a plus one to that. And so that gives me a grand total of two, two, six, and seven observation for this monocyte of which the question should it be successful is affiliation. All right, what do you got? I got no cards to play at this point, so I'm at the mercy of whatever you're about to throw at me. So I have just one card. I have one adversary, Scott, Scott Hosterov, which costs seven. Puts me down to zero. What the hell is this? Right there, Pork. How's the wound? I'll live. What is this back? Get the door. Where did Mulder go? He got a call. Is he a believer? Oh, yeah. 
then we're the only ones who know. Right. Um, so if this, it's activator or conspiracy and affiliation site, keyword adversary government, phone and creature. If the site prerequisite is alien investigation, then this part is free, which it is not. Any witnesses contributing to the site's skill check are immediately discarded, and this adversary may use martial arts and subterfuge cards. And I don't currently have any witnesses contributing to this site skill check, so nothing to discard there. However, I am going to be using Manor, one of Manners' token to call forth a witness because I am in desperate need of some aid at this point. So if you'll just bear with me one more time, I'm going to be searching my deck for something to alleviate this situation against that very, very deadly adversary. You still going to hold the boy? Oh, you bet your blankety blank bleep on you. But the victim seems to confirm his alibi. The hell she did? Those kids' stories couldn't be more bleeping different. And it is. Yes, I did include him. Thank goodness. I was pretty sure I was not going to be without some of... Because if I'm going to have manners, I might as well have at least some witnesses that he can, you know, otherwise, what's the point of having manners, right? I yeah. granted he could call for some of the season four ones, but I was leaving out a lot of staples in the game, Guillaume, so... Oh, so you did include some of those, okay. Well, I don't know if these were staples per se, but it was, uh, you know, part of that 30% that is commercially released cards. It's you know, a few of them being some of the witnesses, but I will be deducting two from my resource pool to pay for Sheriff Mazeroski, who negates one government pawn. And if I'm not mistaken, he has both government and pawn in his yeah, list of keywords, correct? Yeah. Excellent. So that is knocked out. Excellent. And so I'm still alive. Guillaume has unfortunately exhausted his conspiracy pool, which means... Uh, my team will be uh, successfully investigating this site that's been sitting on my playmat for far too long, thanks to Quarantine Zone. So, <laughs> what a lovely cat. Very beautiful. Um, so, why don't I take a crack at your X-Files affiliation? What say you? Let's go. Let's go. I might be getting to scratch off more if I were to ask Guillaume, by any chance... Is your X Files affiliation primordial? Uh, no, it is not. It is not. I'm certainly playing this game the hard way tonight. So I'm going to discard Angie's Midnight Bull. We're going to head into debriefing now, for which I will be keeping all of the five cards that are in my hand. What about you? I have six. Six. Uh, I'm going to generate the res, which is still one, two, three. I'm going to take the two cards from order, and I'm going to buy two cards. So that's four. Okay. And back to you to sell and buy. Thank you. I'm definitely going to sell one. I'm just not excited if I want to sell a second one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell advice from a loser for five. And Hotel James Moreau for two. And that's seven. So of that seven, I'm going to buy five cards. No, four. Four. And add three to my conspiracy pool. All you, my friend. Um, no healing, no requisition, for case, uh, deployment and keeping everyone in the field. And for case assignment, we are going to go to Jerish now RV. Um, I'm going to use one of Mulder's token to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Criminal investigation and results. And before I pass it to you, I'm also going to play Maintain deniability for two. <laughs> Tell me what you 
A POW named Tiger may be back home carrying out death sentences against the men that left him in Vietnam. Who are those men? Generals, Stefan and McDougal. They have a connection. What is that? A recent news story extremely embarrassing to the U.S. military about the disposing of South Vietnamese soldiers. Men employed by our government as spies and commandos and then left behind enemy lines to certain capture and death. The operation was disavowed and their lives were erased from the records. By a secret three-man commission who may now be facing charges, whose testimonies might be used in the calculation of reparations. Are you saying that our government wants these officers dead? Why would they ask us to protect them? Because they know you can't. That is going to get me. I love that card. <laughs> that is a great card. Have at it. I've got nothing for that. No bluffs. And I certainly have nothing that I can play against a maintaining the deniability card. So it's a result question. Is your result manipulation of evidence? Son of a bitch! It is! <laughs> well done! Well done! That was a hell of a guess. I, I was, was being clever I, with that one. Because it's the one that allows you to cross off the most answers, but since I know you choose, your, you don't choose randomly, so... You are definitely not out of this game by a long shot. With, with that one yes answer, you are back in this. Well, you going to take a crack at it? You don't have too many left. I, I'm finishing crossing off, but I, I, I will tentatively say I'm not going to ask an identity question, but yeah, no, you know what? I'm not asking an identity question. Yeah. With that one question, you jumped ahead of me, actually. You have more scratched off than I do. Because the last time that we bought, one of the last times that we played and I asked an identity question just to, you know, cross up one affiliation, you did get a penalty question and it was the right question to ask and that puts you way ahead of me, so I'm not making that mistake. You actually recounted that exact story in playtest number 10. I was just editing that part this morning. It's still and <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it must still be stinging. But... Oh, and I need to see how many I have here. Seven. So I'll keep them all. What about you? Oh, I have nine, so I have some reporting to do. All right. So, hey, hosting will be coming back in your next round. So that's yeah. good. Team will be back to full strength again. Okay, so I'm discarding Nat Nathaniel Tiger because you do have at you least have observation. You have four agents who have observation, so that called... Is less appealing now. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, and I, yeah. And Mike Millar gets a bonus to his observation. You know, so yeah, yeah, we'd be uh, a bit formidable against that guy. Which, but he's otherwise one that can run amok through a team pretty easily. If they're not very observant. So I'd with Peter gone, that takes you down to seven cards. Yeah. Yeah, I also discarded Mrs. Peacock. Oh, I, okay. Yeah, sorry, I missed that. All right, let's pass it back to me. I'll draw my free card to start a new round. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Uh, so with my team at full strength, I'll be generating six res, two of which will be for Mulder. I, uh, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking I'll do four cards and add two to the resource pool i'm going to sell two cards unfortunately uh, i'm going to sell lieutenant wilmer and further make you for six total of six well, that's a bit of relief we may not be seeing the bounty hunter tonight unless you decide you want to pay the full cost for him or did um, you buy no I, well, I did not buy yet uh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry 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 buy... Well, one card. One card? Yeah. Okay. And back to you. Thank you. Uh, so once again, um, we can skip the healing phase as everyone is in full health at the moment. For requisition, not sitting on any equipment cards right now, so there won't be a, much of that either. We'll, um, we'll keep the team deployed as they are. 
for case assignment, give me just a second to think how I want to do this. Um, okay, let's do it. We're going to be seeing two sites put on the board. One is the Tunguska Siberian Forest, which is a multi-site YAM with the keywords alien investigation, subterfuge, affiliation, and result. We also have Jerry Schnauz's RV in Traverse City, Michigan, which is a mono site with the keywords criminal investigation and, and result, as you know from a previous investigation there. I will be using Mulder's last token to pay for Jerry Schnauz's RV, and I will be deducting one for my resource pool to pay for Tunguska. All right. I wait any bluffs you have. No bluffs. No bluffs. Let's head into the investigation phase in which I will be sending Mulder and Mike Millar to Tunguska. And I'll be sending the remaining agents to Jerry Schnauz's RV. And because Jerry Schnauz's RV is a mono site, Detective Hudak will be adding one back to my resource pool. But the cost of witnesses will be doubled for that site, or will be increased by one, sorry. Um, so let's start with, um, we'll start with the Jerry Schnauz's RV, which is criminal investigation and result. Detective Manners has one, Hudak has two, Agent Heaton has one, which is just enough to make the site prerequisite. I'm going to play Roach, take the hostage for four. Ooh. I'm beginning to believe we do share that nexus you spoke of. You always seem to find me. Are you okay, Caitlin? Good. My name is Fox, and I'm going to take you home. I have your gun, Fox. Caitlin, can you do me a favor? Can you count to 20? Can you do that? Will you close your eyes and count to 20 out loud? Quietly and slowly. One, two, two three. I will shoot. Don't make this end badly. You're not going to be very much a choice. I really don't want to go back to prison. Put the gun down, Roche! Both an opening team to make a subterfuge for plus skill check. If they fail, apply a minus two modifier to the site skill check and you get all witnesses that are modifying the team skill check, which there aren't any. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, I uh, I'm stumped on that one, Giam. You certainly uh, you certainly uh, paid well for that card, which cost. What does he cost again? By the way, I'm blanking on that one. It costs four. Four. Yeah, worth every penny. So with that, the site investigation is failed, and I'll discard Jerry Schnauz's RV. Let's see if maybe we can fare somewhat better over in Tunguska. Um, so it's a, it's a multi-site, so the prerequisite is five. We'll be applying our alien investigation skills to that, of which Mulder has four, Millar has one, but because he is on the same team as Mulder, he's awarded a bonus one, which takes me up to six alien investigation. Yeah, you can go ahead. I have nothing for that. All right, so not too bad. Got something out of it. But again, I think even if I get a yes answer, well, if I get a yes answer, that might actually put me back in the lead. But uh, <laughs> let's let's see if I can actually get something right for a change. Uh, affiliation might be the best way to go. Actually, if I ask if it's death, I'll be able to eliminate more possibilities. Not too many more. Yeah, let's go with result. Guillaume, by any chance, is your X-Files result death? Uh, no, it's not. Again, yeah. Slow but surely, I am 
whittling it down. So that leaves only one possibility for evolution. It'd be funny if that's the one. Okay, well, yeah, I certainly have still quite a few left. Yeah, and seeing as you have me down to six, I'm disinclined to even bother taking a shot at identifying your X-File. So I'm going to discard Tunguska, and let's head into the briefing, shall we? All right, I have five cards. Okay. I'm going to get rid of something. Just bear with me. You know my X-Files result, yeah. yes? Yes. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to discard Ed Jurse since that has an activator result. I mean, granny, you could still play a multi-site, but I figure I might as well just, yeah, got to get rid of something. So, back to you. Okay, I'm drawing my free card. I'm going to play Happy Birthday on Crycheck. Hmm. A zero, which allows me to double his res. Uh, so I have one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to buy two from order and and three cards. So that's for a total of five. Hmm. I'm going to sell two cards. Mrs. Mulder for five and Alien Bounty Healer for four. That's nine. I was debating whether to play Mrs. Mulder for that last one, but I was like, you know what? I really only put her in there just for CP. But uh, I was I admit I was very tempted to do so. What I'm going to do, I think, is of that nine, I'll draw five cards and then I'll add four to the conspiracy pool. Over to you. Right, so no healing. I'm not requisitioning anything for deployment. Uh, Albert is going to join the rest of the team. Focus assignment, we are going to go to Coastal Northwest Oregon. I'm going to use Mulder's last token to pay for that. It's an investigation for plus and affiliation question. Two bluffs. All right, I'm sending everyone to the site. Okay. First one, death card. Not so, not so bad. Um, because it was face down, I'll be able to add three to my conspiracy pool. The second one is Mrs. Peacock. Force your opponent to discard one witness resource in play. Bye-bye, Samantha. It's too bad. And adversaries may ignore activator requirements to, t to attack right. agents at this site. I'll be deducting two for my conspiracy pool because... what? Before I discard her, I forgot to add one to my resource when I played. Oh, go, go for it. Yes, yeah. You, you are... Yep, no problem. So at least she got to give you a little bit on her way out. Yeah. Okay, so I deducted two from my conspiracy pool to pay for Mrs. Peacock. So that's nice. You know, that in addition uh, condition got met in order to play her, so that was nice. So now we're going to be playing the Peacock Brothers, which is also very fitting because their mother just enabled them because they are primordial adversaries, and so I'm able to disregard their motive activator to play them on this particular site. Sometimes we walk hand in hand by the sea And we breathe in the cool salty air So the Peacock Brothers' effect, Guillaume, is that we apply a minus one to any equipment cards attached to the team that modify long-range combat or close-range. You don't have any, so that's kind of a moot point. However, damage caused by this adversary may be split among all opponents 
director player's choice. Oh, and I got to deduct eight from my conspiracy pool to pay for them. So that takes my resource pool down from 15. 15 minus eight is seven. No. Yes, that's right. Yeah, seven. Okay, thank you. Sorry. You have eight long range. So yeah. you'll be attacking the team with that full brunt of eight, uh, which will take the Peacock Brothers' health down from 10 to two. So they will be able to go into the close range round of which they will be applying a total of seven close range for which can be split among um, um, all opponents. So they will be applying five of that damage to Mulder, which is going to be enough to send him to the hospital and they'll apply the remaining two to Albert Hosting. So Mulder is sent to the hospital, correct? Yep. And Hosteen is hanging by a thread. Okay. But your remaining team has currently enough close range to defeat them as they stand with just the two remaining health. All right, so he has two. And I'm going to play Bill Mulder for three. Bill Mulder. So that keeps you guys... Yeah. Uh, oh, that's going to prevent Mulder from going to the hospital, right? Yeah. Mulder the hospital may be negated by playing the Bill Mulder card. Okay. What's that? It says any card that would send Mulder to the hospital may be negated by playing the Bill Mulder card. Yeah, indeed it does. <laughs> Good old Bill Mulder. So uh, for the hefty, hefty cost of eight, that keeps your team still in there. I mean, it's here. Me as well. May as well use it. All right. Well, because Mrs. Peacock still stands, that means I'll be able to play any other primordial adversaries I have, which I have one more, and that is the Russian horseman. Again, keyword primordial, and we're able to disregard the method activator to play them here, which is going to take my conspiracy pool down to zero. So you know, Guillaume, from having probably played the Russian Horseman at least one time or another, that if an agent's health is reduced to zero by this adversary, place the agent in a section of the table, designated the gulag, and discard any equipment. The agent remains in prison for three full turns or until a keyword escape card is played on them. Place three tokens on the agent and remove one during each of the agent's briefing phases. When the last token is removed, move the agent to the bureau undamaged. <sighs> And so I will, yeah, as I've already emptied out my conspiracy pool to pay for them, they do have a long range of three, which they will be... Um, and I have a long range of, well, eight. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I could go ahead and send hosting back because, yeah, that's probably the best bet. <laughs> and so I'm going to play ambush for two. Son of a bitch. I'm going to play it on check. Or on hosting, whatever. So I need to play it on the combatant with a subterfuge skill of 1 plus to negate the opposing side long range combat attack. Well done on that front. You came packing. Yeah. You came packing with the combat cards, and it paid off. So, bravo. Yeah, Yost, it would have been a slaughter fest otherwise. Yes, it would have, but Guillaume remembered to pack a few combat cards on the way. So, yeah. Yeah, it was still an exciting round nonetheless, because that was... was a full brunt of adversaries right there from the Season 4 expansion. As you can see, I've got nothing else to combat you. You have earned that question. All right, so it's an affiliation question. So. It certainly is. And remind me, what do I have again? Oh, yeah, that one. Is your affiliation evolutionary? 
God damn it, it is. Well, I think that might have it then. Uh, let me pull up Yost's checklist, and I think we'll see where we are now. Well, no, you got me down to two. So, yeah, you want to 50-50 this and call it a night? I don't know. David Peace is like, combat cards for the win. Heck, yeah. I had one, too, that I was going to play, but with that Bill Mulder card. Um, I think yeah. I said that was, I think, isn't it, isn't it the one where you can attack twice during close? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it was. So it was going to be enough to knock out Mulder and Hosting, so it would have prevented that investigation. Uh, but <laughs> you forced me to draw out two adversaries with that, and I, for all the good it did, <laughs> the combat cards paid off. So again, any of you who are watching who are doubting the efficacy of combat cards, I hope this round maybe gave you some pause to maybe consider throwing one or two into your future decks. They are yeah. worth it. David P says, I underestimated the Mrs. Peacock card. Yeah, it's a pretty cool card. Now, to be fair, though, you have to meet the first condition of discarding a witness resource in order to benefit from the second part of the effect, which is what I was able to do because he had Samantha Mulder's agrarian clone out on the field. But given that the Season 4 expansion is rife with witness resource cards, it's a fairly safe bet that that opportunity to meet that first condition on Mrs. Peacock would be easy to do. And it was this evening. Yeah. Anyway, uh, debrief. God, I played a lot of cards. So yeah, seven in my hand, keeping them. Yeah, I have seven as well. Yeah. Let's pass it back to me then. Draw that free card. Okay. I really need something here. All right. So Mulder's two along with how about we just break even? Three cards, two of which are for Mulder, and then add three to the resource pool. What are you selling? Um, sell the Tunguska Siberian Forest one and the Sweat Tactical Gear for six. Mm. Puts me up at eight. And I'm going to buy three cards. Let's. Um... Let's head into healing, uh, for which my agents are all good. No one's in need of medical attention at this point, surprisingly. Uh, for requisition, I don't even think I drew equip. Oh, no, I did, but I ain't, I ain't uh, requisitioning it to them. So for deployment, we'll keep them all out in the field because I might need every bit of skills they can muster for this next investigation. For case assignment, we'll be sending the team to Steveston, Massachusetts. Interesting way of life. Did you get any sense about it? There's something up there, Mulder. Well, I've been saying that for years. That is a monocyte Guillaume with the keywords behavioral and result. And I will be deducting two to pay for that. Um, what the hell? Search warrant. Let's get that out of the way. I'm going to pay five to... Examine Guillaume's hand, and he must discard two cards from his hand. My choice. Oh, that's too bad. Yep, so that have... takes my resource pool down to four, by the way. So I have the Apollo 11 keychain. It's oh, a nice card. The Federal Command Center. Uh, Atlantic City. And then for CP cards, I have Exhumation. I have Trial 1. I have the Gulag Bird, Cancerous Nosebleed, 
And I have one combat card block. It's going to be Gulag Bird and let's do Exhumation and Gulag Bird. All right. As we uh, look at uh, my team's behavioral skill for which Mulder has three. Um, um, oh, yep. I had one block to play face down. Oh, play it. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Go, go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Got just one? Yeah. Just Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So let's head into investigating phase. Yeah. Um, Mulder has three behavioral. And Detective Hudek has two. So that's enough to make the skill check. And Detective Hudek's going to be adding one to my resource pool because it is a mono site. So the bluff is trial run. Trial run. It costs well, two and one since it, since it was face down. How did this happen? It's been taken care of. The details are unimportant. Details are everything. Much more important than your vague assurances. Well, you'll have to trust my assurance that any other breaches have been handled. Handled by whom? I have a man in place. A man with no other choice but to succeed. And what assurance can you give us that he can be trusted? We can't risk even the slightest exposure. He has nothing to expose. Except his own duplicity. Should we assume that the trial run is proceeding as planned? already begun. Basically, I look at the number of witnesses in my discord file and I multiply that by two and that's what I add to my conspiracy pool. And I have four witnesses in my discord file, so I'll be adding eight. Mm -hmm. I do not have any cards that I wish to play at this point. You got anything else you want to throw at me? Uh, no, I have nothing else to play. That's it? Okay. Well, in that case, I'll be taking another crack at your X-Files results. Okay. Dion, by any chance, is your X-Files result physiological? Is there a physiological imbalance? Is that what it is? No, it's not. Okay. And once again, it's a no on that front. But I was able to knock off five. Possibilities. So I have five cards. Uh, don't want to do it, but true grit. Sayonara. Mm -hmm. It's the cheapest one I have. Everything else I need to sell. Back to you. All right. So bring my free card. Generating my res is four. And I'm going to buy one card in addition to more of those two cards and back to you all right i'm gonna i gotta sell pretty much everything because I, I gotta get out of this round otherwise it's game i'm gonna sell four cards swat tactical gear for six work a deal for three a near-death experience for four and father McHugh for two that is 15. Oh. Um, I'm going to add 12. to the conspiracy pool. And I'll get three. Oh, boy. This could have been a mistake. Over to you. So no, he, uh, no healing, no requisition. Uh, the vermin and putting everyone in the field. I'm going to play two sites. I'm going to play the Federal Command Center for two and Atlantic City for one, that's three. 
So the federal command center is a for plus and it's a result question. And the uh, Atlantic City is subterfuge five plus or observation five plus and it's affiliation or motive. All right, one bluff on each of them. This one here is going to the Federal Command Center. Okay. This one is going to Atlantic City. Okay. So I'm sending everyone to Atlantic City. Everyone's going to Atlantic City, huh? Yeah. Okay. The bluff is cancerous nosebleed, for which, because it was face down, I'll be paying four, which takes my Conspiracy pool to eight. Play this card to add the keyword cancer to an opposing agent's keywords. The agent's health is reduced by one. For each of the opponent's debriefing phases, the agent spends outside the hospital. If the agent's health is reduced to zero, they must remain in the hospital till health is restored. This card is removed when a healing card is played on the agent. Okay. Let's, so I'm um, going to remove the last token from bitter defeat to double the cost of that bluff. Yep, and so since I paid for that, um, I'll uh, yeah, I'll be adding, I'll be paying four more for it because it was face down, correct? So I deduct four more from my conspiracy pool, which takes it down to four. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. we'll be we'll be putting it on hosting. All right, so we'll put that up there. Mm. All right, so, so I'll go ahead and just play Leonard Betts just because I get to play him for free, just for the fun of it, but you guys are going to destroy him. I'm sorry. You've got something I need. So, uh, when placed on a keyword cancer card, Hosting's got cancer on him at this point. This adversary is free and activator requirements are ignored. Leonard Betts regenerates one point of health for each witness discarded from my hand. I unfortunately don't have any in my hand, so that's not going to help me. So, yeah, but you guys are going to be able to take him down in long range because he's got zero. And you guys have more than his five, so he's out. I just wanted to play him for free because we had the keyword cancer in play. The only time that we've actually seen him being played. Exactly. So it's just, you know, just to cross that little uh, item off of our checklist of things to do with uh, this expansion. So that was all that was accomplishing. And I got nothing else. So it's Bring it uh, home. a physician on motive. Is your motive ideology? Probably is. Uh, let's see. Nope, but you do know what it is now. So are you the central operating system? Yes, I am. And with that, Guillaume has bested me with my own Season 4 expansion cards. And so the confetti is raining down upon Guillaume for the first time. And what, what, once this video is edited, it will be raining down upon him, I promise you. So perhaps what it is, Guillaume, is maybe the fact that you are positioned on this side of the screen. Maybe there is something about being in that side. Oh. Bravo. I'm, I'm very, very impressed with the way you uh, held me off, especially in that uh, previous round with those adversaries. The combat cards shown brightly 
Yeah, combat code and Bill Mulder were really yeah. useful. Mulder. It really came down to Bill Mulder as well. What what was the bluff on the second site? Oh, it was uh wait. Oh, this one? Oh, it was um Jason Ludwig. That would have done it, but if you had not sent Mulder over there, I was kind of banking on you maybe sending um I figured you were gonna send Crycheck maybe over there. And then uh so I played Ludwig and knocked that one out. <laughs> that second site was kind of a bluff because would, I yeah. wrote, and I figured I might as well try to have you spread out your bluffs. Yep. yep. And I think that the first season four playtest where I did not even reach half of my deck because usually I manage to have a lot of TP, so I yeah. buy a lot of cards and I go through the, the deck. So you want to take a crack at my X file? I mean, from the nine remaining. <laughs> I mean, and considering how well I've been guessing tonight, um, it'd be funny if you were Dr. Banton and his shadow because that was the last evolutionary one. I'll just yeah. say that just because it... Are you kidding me? <laughs> it was Dr. Banton and his shadow. The one evolutionary... Like, Yost, I know you were, you're following along too, and that one evolutionary X-File was... And me right in the face. That's why I did not ask you uh, when I was, there were only two remaining possibilities. That's why I did not want to ask you because I knew that your penalty question was going to be Dr. Benton just to cross him off. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. I, just to rule out that one affiliation. Obvious. It was what once, I did last time. So yeah. you, my result was death and I said no and I knew Benton was the only remaining possibility and I knew that if you managed to ask one more question then that would be it for me. So yeah. that was kind of, I think maybe the last 20, the last part of the game was really stressful because I knew what your next question was going to be. So, so what, do you think, what do you think of Bitter Defeat? Sorry. Oh, Bitter Defeat? I'm loving it. Especially considering games like we're playing right now where we're not uh, able to draw upon our usual staples like Langley or even, in my case, the alien discretion for alien investigation sites to get out of bad bluff situations. I'm liking the change because, yeah, as we, uh, and oh, so for those of you who may not be aware, uh, Bitter Defeat originally had an effect where basically the, the, the mechanic was all the same, but we had applied it to a government adversaries only. However, that turned out to be the exact effect for one of the Scully set uh, events, and so therefore we had to revise that one. And so I, th well, I, I like the mechanic; it's a very good mechanic. So thought, why not we apply it to bluffs? The reason I ask is because this, you know, I had like, for instance, cancerous nosebleed or good eye bird at the end, but I knew that I would not be able to pay for them because of that bitter defeat uh, and it did work out in my favor in the end so i'm not complaining about the card i just wondering do you think it might be just a little too powerful for the cost or should it be um on face down bluffed or on one face down bluff and one face up bluff I don't know when you look when I look at cards like Alien Discretion, which I can just pay one to get rid of a bluff, like one RP to get rid of a, a bluff and two RP to get rid of two bluffs. When I look at that, I'm like, that is dirt cheap. I can discard. I can play Alien Discretion and pay three to negate two bluffs. Three the difference is it's not a. Reason. I know. I don't know. We're talking cost, so it's yeah, it's countering it in a different way. Uh, but again, I was just talking about the efficacy of driving back bluffs from your investigation. It's a, it's not a bad. I mean, it's a good question. Um, because you, you know, bitter defeat is a resource. So once you have it in play, you know that you are you are at least will be able to fend off two bluffs. Yeah, two. And that's again, it it, it doesn't necessarily fend it off. I mean, it does to some extent. But like, look at the cases. Like I I made that choice to pay the full brunt of that uh, gulag bird to get your agent out of there. And I still, you know, got hosting out for three rounds. So it's kind of like for all the good, bitter 
defeat did, I still managed to get through with the bluff. So compare that to like say alien discretion, which can completely negate like two bluffs for the low, low cost of three. And so it's like, it's not even a question of, you know, your opponent like, mm, hemming and hawing over the cost. It's well, the alien discretion just took care of that and Lang Link, which cost two to get rid of one bluff. So I don't know. It is a good question. And we can, re we can certainly open that up to uh, discussion both in discord. And we do have the gentleman here, one, one of which David is in the discord group. So um, yeah, we can certainly talk about it. I'm it like, I'm inclined to think it's okay. It's an okay. I mean, at most, if we're talking about increasing the cost, I would maybe only consider adding one more Just maybe one. At, most, at most. But again, it's like, it's, uh, again, I, I, you know, I use, I, I use alien discretion very frequently because I have alien investigation sites. Uh, so I usually have two of those cards in my deck, but again, and it's such an easy out. It's like Langley in a way that it can get me out of a one, possibly two bluff situation for very cheap. So I don't know. I, I, my gut's saying that comparatively the cost isn't bad and there's still your opponent has the choice to bite the bullet and pay like they, what they could do is they could pay some very cheap bluffs. Like Jason Ludwig put that phase down is like, okay, yeah, I'll pay double for that. I mean, that's an easy, that's a fairly cheap bluff, you know, to get out of, you know, and they, and what they can, that's a strategy they can apply is like, okay, I'll use the cheap bluffs to burn through hit to burn through their uh, bitter defeat. And so they can get out of it that way. And then it's like, okay, now that I've got your bitter defeat out of the way, okay, then cancerous nosebleed, gulag bird, you know, then they can, you know, have possibility of playing the. So there's ways around it. So I wouldn't say it's, it is a powerful card, but it's like, it's got, it, I mean, it's, it's got flaws and there's ways to get around it as opposed to like, say, you know, Langley or alien discretion was like, well, you got to have a pretty much an alien experimentation card to negate that. And that's pretty much it. On the cards that did not, uh, well, I had the biohazard suit, obviously. Uh, I had this is one card that I've been wanting to play, never had a chance. Uh, Recognition, yeah. So it's yeah. basically uh, Faster's effect, but applied to an event card. So for the uh, team that don't have deputy, I said Faster. Uh, it's deputy Pastor's effect, but applied to an event card. So if you don't have Pastor on your team. Reconnaissance still gives you that option. It's kind of like how Bill Patterson's effect is also Mostow Sketch's event as an you know as an event. So again, if you don't have Patterson, you still get the chance to try out that effect if you'd like. I also had airlift, which I did not get to use. That is uh, going to be a hard one to do. I mean, even driving is a hard card in the in the premier truth is out there set but i mean i figure airlift you probably have an, a better chance because you have neighboring states and whatnot you manage to play that one but you do have to I, I i tried when when i picked my sites i think i saw that there were many sites which were you know in, in at least the same states i would not go as far as to say they were in the neighboring states because i would have had to look that up but um i figured i might Maybe use Airlift, but I didn't. I had the Mulder Family Legacy card. I did have that in mind. Yep. And I I thought you would be playing the Golem, and since I was also he's in there, he just did not come up. <laughs> area Weiss. Yep. And I have Symbol of Protection as well. Yep. Um, Golem. Yeah, he was a he was a few more. He was a few cards down. Yeah, I, I, about fifteen more down. Oh. I have a feeling on our next game, Yam's going to be like, hey, Steve, I know you're controlling the broadcast, but can you move me over to this side of the screen? Just, <laughs> just to see if that's, uh, if it's so all in, you know. But actually, so not. No, you've, be you've bested me in a couple powers games off off camera. Before we sign off, you, you there's something you need to show David. Oh, okay. Yeah. I Okay. And Yost, too. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty cool uh, idea that uh, Guillaume and I came up with uh, the week before last. So hold on. Because I had it printed, I just need to find it. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, like, David, like, Steven has his own agent card. So is that right now? we figured we'd all try to have our own custom agent card. 
So Steven and I worked on mine last Sunday, last weekend. And so, yeah. So, so I do, I now have my own Asian card, which I will need to have properly printed, but yeah. So basically it's uh, bureaucracy two, computer two, evidence collection one and observation one. One long range, one close range and four health and one res. It costs four. And my game effect is that um, I can put one resource token on my card and I can use that token to pay for any resource card. And at the end of the, during my next briefing phase, I put the token back on the card and, and so on. Yep, very nice backdrop too. Um, yeah, good image. Um, so yeah, David, when you have some time, think about an agent card for yourself and we can help you with formulating it if you'd like. But of course, this is, you know, this is your card. This is for you. And, you know, if you want, I mean, however, if you're trying to think like, oh, how can I translate an effect to my own self? You know, it's just, it's up to you. Um, we can come up with something or you could just, you know, use an effect that you like. Um, try to make it maybe somewhat unique from the existing agent effects. Sure. Um, just so that it stands out. Um, but yeah. I think it would be really cool if, like, at some point when we're all playing a game where we have our respective agent cards, you know, as part of the team. So that about wraps it up here. Uh, I do want to thank Guillaume for a great game, and congrats again on the excellent win. Yeah, it has been it was a great episode, and we didn't find any kinks in the cards this evening. The cards should be good to go. If nothing else, we might find a spelling error or something that we might have missed somewhere along the way. Let's see. Any other line? Any other business to discuss? No, I think we've covered everything. Excellent. And if you guys do have any suggestions on games you'd like us to play, whether they be augmented rules or you just want to see us uh, revisit some of the other optional ones like X File Powers or Killer Cards, please let us know what you want to see. Um, just drop a comment, and, or you know, just you know, you guys can PM me. You know, most of you are in the Facebook group, so you know where to find me. And, uh, of course, if you have a chance, hit the subscribe button, give the video a like. So, again, let us know that we're on the right track with what we're doing. And I think that's about it. Would you yeah. agree, Guillaume? Yes. All right. Thanks again for a great game. And uh, be sure to tune in next time for another exciting edition of Alien Investigations.